Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Heads in the Clouds. Uh, I'm James Bernand. I have with me, as always, Joe DeLivo, and today we have an extremely special guest, uh, Mr. Jeff Winter. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and I don't imagine there's many of you out there who haven't seen or heard of Jeff before, he's the number one industry thought leader, according to Onlytica, as well as many other prestigious awards. He's uh, he, he's the the chair of committees. He's a, a part of a lot of different uh, online statistics and information that's provided. And bluntly, he's probably the most prominent uh, leader in Industry 4.0 that I know. So uh, I wanted to say hello and welcome to the podcast, Jeff. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here, especially because of my unique relation with both of you guys. Yeah. That's so, nice. uh, so full disclosure is uh, both Joe and I have worked with Jeff in the past, and we uh, we have a, a fairly long-standing professional relationship, as well as uh, I consider Jeff to be one of my personal friends. So, uh, I'm super happy to uh, to have convinced him to come on our our little podcast, and uh, hopefully for for anyone that's listening, uh, you know, you you can get some get some value out of this uh, this conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Cool. So uh, we, we've we seeded up a couple questions just to try to make sure we can drive the conversation the right way. Um, so, so I'll get started. So Jeff, what do you think are the biggest emerging trends in the industrial space this year? So this is a, a funny question because I would have an entirely separate answer to give you if ChatGPT didn't get released. But because ChatGPT what, got what's released- What's ChatGPT? I've never heard of it. It completely dwarfs everything. Never heard of it? You should uh, you should chat GPT what chat GPT is. <laughs> so <laughs> the, this, this technology, and keep in mind, when I say the word chat GPT, I'm, I'm generally referring to all of generative AI, but chat GPT has become the primary word, kind of like Google to describe all, you know, um, internet searches. So when I say chat GPT, I don't necessarily mean open AI's chat GPT, uh, experience that you have, but all generative AI, because generative AI has been out for years, but it really became publicly known as a household term, basically at the end of 2022. And yep. since then, it has taken off really by storm. It's impacting every industry, and I would argue every function uh, from the entry level all the way up to, to CEO. And what makes this technology so different than other massively disruptive technologies out there is an example like blockchain. I would argue blockchain is a massively disruptive technology, but blockchain takes a lot of time, energy, and money to be able to fully utilize and implement. ChatGPT is one of the fastest technologies that you can implement. And since Microsoft made their investment to OpenAI and they get access to the models, they've publicly announced they're integrated into every single one of their products. So now it's just going to be a feature that's turned on where you don't have to do anything as a user. And that's what makes this technology so much more disruptive than everything else is how easily everyone can use it. You can implement it in hours instead of years. Yeah, I, I know I watched uh, one of the, the recent announcements and talking about Microsoft Copilot, uh, where where Satya and, and a bunch of the different folks from Microsoft were were describing the future of work and how how impactful it could be on the monotony of certain tasks and certain things. And, um, you know, actually seeing it in action applied to things like uh, writing proposals and documents and and gathering information. But one of the coolest things I thought was was how it could summarize meetings and take the key takeaways. And and th there's really a, a ton of I'll call them office centric practical use cases. Um, but what, what what do you think about manufacturing? How do how do we apply it to the actual manufacturing process? What What's the what's the biggest use case there? <laughs> Uh, I think everyone is trying to figure that out right now. The other part that makes this technology so disruptive is the fact that everyone is trying to figure out how best to utilize it. Think of it as just a creativity enabler, and those that are able to harness the power of this creativity and apply it to different aspects of their business faster will be in such a huge competitive advantage uh, over others. So a lot of what uh, I like to talk about and used to talk about with various different clients is around understanding how to think about it so that you can 
most appropriately apply it to your very specific business cases because there's so many opportunities out there that you don't have to look and go, what's the number one use case that another company use? You can look at as to what would be impactful for your business based off of what data is readily available. So one of the things you have to note is that really there's there's two main ways that you can think about ChatGPT as a concept. One is the fact that there's the public version using its um, predetermined large language model to understand what you're typing in and to spit out an answer. And you can think of it, you know, as having its huge corpus of data based off of what the internet knew at the time that it was generated. That's one way to use it, all right? Just how to use it to help speed up your processes based off of common understanding of just normal things. The second is linking the model to your data and having a chat GPT for your company based off your own data. That one, though, you can't really do if your data isn't properly normalized, contextualized, and, and properly indexed. So it ends up driving a lot of companies to go, what data is most important for our company to have access to in a chat GPT? And we need to get our systems and you know even data structure set up so that we can properly use it. So to answer your question, what I'm seeing right now that most companies are looking to use quickly is what they already have digitized and readily available. As an example, I have some companies that have their user manuals for their machines already digitized. If you have your user manuals already digitized and they're properly loaded in, you can feed them right into a chat GPT model and ask questions like, can you summarize the maintenance procedures on this entire line of those you know, 12 machines and write out a safety checklist in both English and in Spanish and produce a quiz for my employees to make sure that they understand how to use it? You can do that today if you have the data. That's uh, well, I, that's that's a really cool use case. And and yeah, I, I, I honestly think a lot of these, you know, the, the issues we have with chat, GT, chat, chat GPT is the creativity of knowing what to ask for. Um, you know, going back to your point at the beginning of that, that the last uh, the last part of the discussion, talking about data, talking about, you know, clean data, organized, modeled information that can be useful. I think there's there's such a huge demand for that now. And we've seen so much of that as as being a baseline requirement for so many things, including, you know, the, these these AI tools. Um, I, I wonder kind of, you know, if this will finally be the thing that that really drives the the organizations in the manufacturing space in general to be investing in this completely and heavily because I, I I'm seeing movement in it, but it's still it's still not consistent. You got thoughts on that, Joe? I, I oh, think you're right. Were you saying me or Joe? I, Joe hasn't <laughs> no, got go to ahead. say anything. Joe hasn't got to say anything. Go yet. ahead, Joe. No, I, I, I'm I'm enjoying this, and I wanted to hear your response, Jeff, and then I'll jump in with my own uh, my own snarky uh, comment about Clippy. So please go All ahead. Right, I like it. <laughs> so I would say that what you're going to find is that ChatGPT is going to be the driver for a lot of other initiatives, and it will rechange the priority of some existing initiatives. Good examples being, you know, the the proverbial IT OT convergence. This may completely shift its priority organ in the organization and what parts of it you're actually focusing on because of the use of ChatGPT. Even though ChatGPT itself is a small investment and a you know fairly easily easy thing to roll out, the big heart of the problem is going to be getting your data readily available. And I think this is going to completely shift what companies do with it. There's one question I usually like to ask leaders of companies, and this shows two different things simultaneously. I usually typically ask leaders of organizations, if you had ChatGPT readily available on all of your company data, in theory, what would you ask it? And when I do that and I find the CEO or the CIO, the COO, the CTO, all these executives, when I get these answers back, and I've done it several times, you find out really two things. One, you need to ed educate them on what ChatGPT is and generative AI in general, because they're not understanding it right to know what it can do and what it can't. And number two is half the things they're asking don't require generative AI at all. We could have done it with machine learning 10 years ago and be able to produce the answer that they were looking for. So it's a big shift in education and the ability to kind of guide uh, the prioritization of projects. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I think what's incredible about it is that you're you're building on technologies uh, that have existed for a long time in some in some capacity. But I think what ChatGPT has done is really bring it into the public vernacular and is exposing people to it who otherwise probably wouldn't have been. Um, with that, as with any new technology change, um, there's always this sort of gap in understanding and education that needs to be closed. And there's also the potential for people to, let's say, misuse technology. So that's, I think, a whole interesting discussion into itself. But you look at ChatGPT, for example, and it is very confident in what it says. Uh, is it right or is it wrong? So if you ask your company, for example, you've got all this data you feed into the model and you say, uh, who should I lay off for my company, for example? Uh, is it going to give you an answer that you would be able to stand behind? Is there going to be any kind of you know, human in the loop for making decisions around that. So it opens up a can of worms um, and it's great that it's out there now because it's driving these discussions, but there's a whole bunch of other things, you know, ethics aside that I think we have to think about as, as an industry, but it's incredibly exciting. No, no doubt well, about it. I think there's ethics and there's security. I, I forget the exact statistic I read, but there was, there's already a amount of confidential data that's been fed in to chat GPT that, people are unfortunately unaware of because their employees are using it already for helping them reword a, a proposal or an email or or format a, a document. And um, to do that, they're actually sending in data that's being incorporated into the model that was never intended to be done that way. And and so that that's one example of security. I know, Jeff, you, you've probably got a, a whole bunch of other examples of where security needs to be a consideration as well. Not just security, but I would say proper use to add to, to Joe's points. One of the first things I recommend customers do today, if they already haven't done it, is come up with a chat GPT corporate strategy that includes governance around how and where to use it. Because even knowing things like, hey, if you use the public open AI's chat GPT, any information you put in there is accessible to the public is something that I don't know if most companies are fully aware of because I guarantee most of their employees are playing around with chat GPT. The other thing is once you use it inside your company, you also don't want to have it hinder productivity because everyone thinks that this new, cool, shiny toy is able to help them. And then they end up playing around with it and asking unnecessary, unrelated questions that could end up getting them in more into trouble than can actually help them. And so having the education to know where to properly use it and how to put guidelines around it is extremely powerful. And when you make your own company chat GPT, you can train the model to say, I don't know the answer. I mean, that's entirely possible on your own data. But like as an example, one of the things that I guide people to have is make sure you're using it the right way that you uh, that you should be using it and make sure you don't use it in the areas it's not good at. Great examples of what it's good at, summarization, semantic search, which if you're not familiar with that, that's the ability to understand what you're asking and to provide or look up an answer for that rather than a literal typing in exactly what you asked. It will go, I know what you meant, I'm gonna look it up. Your third one is coding. Uh, that's a big one. And then fourth is content generation. Those are like four safe bets that you can use that really won't get you into any trouble. The ones that you can get into trouble is when you start to pinpoint very specific answers, especially that are based off of calculations. So anything that's numerical, you ideally don't want, at least today, ChatGPT to be the thing that makes that answer. You'd rather use a different thing, which is most likely machine learning, to create the answer of which ChatGPT is just looking it up. So it's a it's an understanding of where you should and shouldn't be using it because if you start using it over here you're going to get into a lot of trouble. I love when you combine like you said content generation with summarization. What's going to happen is you're going to be writing an article and somebody's going to put in a prompt and say write me an article about this and then somebody's going to ask ChatGPT to generate that. Then somebody else is going to ask ChatGPT to summarize that and it's like, you know, you're creating content and summarizing content and you're left with kind of maybe the same thing uh, before and after, but there's going to be a lot of this sort of uh, uh, let's say noise that's generated as a result of that, and then a need to filter through the noise like we do with other kinds of you know signal processing. So again, interesting side effect of uh, this great technology. I, I think it really does create uh, a different way to do work too, right? Is is if you can, and and I think this this kind of goes back to to some of the some of the material that's been released around. I'll call it monotonous task management and automation. Um, there's a lot of things that that you know knowledge workers in particular do today that are um, 
that are monotonous. And I would argue that there's there's you know a lot of things that are done by factory workers as well as as you know anybody inside of the workforce has a certain degree of monotony uh, in their their tasks. And when those tasks are predictable, manageable, and quite simply need a review to be able to validate the results so that they can be submitted or or um, you know accelerated i i see that as a as a fantastic use case but it changes the way we do work it changes the amount of effort that's re involved in doing tasks and bluntly without proper management of it inside of your company it it won't work very well you'll have you'll have a you'll have a mix match of of who's using it and who isn't um and you as as the you know the company are going to lose your competitive edge if your competitors are using it to to manage and accelerate their abilities um, for the things that it's really great at. So yeah, I, I I think it's a fundamental shift in the way business is done. It's just you know exactly what that looks like is uh, uh, to me it's still a bit of a mystery, and I guess we'll have to to see as as the world progresses and 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 these models continue to grow. And that's what I'm enjoying is hearing how all the companies I've talked to are thinking about applying it and using it in their organization. As another good example for manufacturers, this could be changing the way that you train your employees and give them access to systems that normally require a lot of training to understand how to use, whether it's MES, QMS, your ERP, it could be your supply chain planning. Now imagine just having a little prompt that you need no training on that you can ask a question like, who's the truck driver for this? route? Who's the operator on this shift? You don't need to look up or understand how any of those systems work to be able to now access them. So really, this could completely change the way anyone in the company goes to a computer to look something up or ever has to enter anything in. If you do either of those two things, this will completely change your life, which is most people, I would argue. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely, I mean, it. it is a it it is a huge deal, and certainly when you look at the use cases and how we can apply it to the to the manufacturing space, I think it's 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 probably you know it's funny because you know a year ago we were talking about the industrial metaverse, and I still think there's value in digital twin, and there's value in and you know co-location and and virtual reality and all of these technologies that that can be complementary. But bluntly, I think they're they're way overshadowed by what what ChatGPT is going to bring to the table. Agreed. Agreed. I still think it's cool to have a headset on and walk my plant, but hey, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, what do you see, Jeff? What What do you see the next couple of years being? I mean, obviously, chat GPT and, and large language models are, are part of that future. But what else? What else is what else is kind of in your vision of where digital transformation is going in the next couple of years and, and how are how are companies going to uh, to adopt and, and adapt? So one part I want to add to the chat GPT, which will uh, go into this, is there's two other ways to look at this. I had it kind of from the inside, but you should look at it uh, when you build it on your model. OK, so there's the public. I'm going to call it the use for language understanding. And then there's the build your own chat GPT. All right. When you do that, there's really two aspects. There's internal optimization. You're helping to improve efficiency on things you're already doing. You're just doing them better, faster today. The other is completely changing the way that you engage with your customers. And that's a one that will drive a whole bunch of other changes in the way that companies work and what technologies they use. Imagine, for example, you now make a chat bot that is so effective for your company, and it can be whether it's on a website, it can be the phone recipients you know that you call and talk to that it's actually better than a person because it can answer better and faster whatever you want to know about anything any question that you have about that company's product or what they do or how they're set up or who you can talk to that will completely change the way that you engage with people as an example let's say you're a a fashion company selling clothes and you go to the website and go i really like what thomas crown uh was wearing what pierce Brosnan was wearing in Thomas Crown Affair. Can you select an outfit to match that? And it can go, of course, and it can select all that for you. That can completely change the way that companies engage with the world. So that, I think, is going to change a lot of other things that are tied with it. I actually think ChatGPT is going to broaden overall AI. You're going to see um, you know, language processing take off. You're going to see computer vision take off, machine learning take off, all these other things. And if you even look at the, the Google trend search, 
So ChatGPT took over in terms of all digital transformation technologies, which I tracked something like 70 of them, but AI grew almost as much at the same time. So that means that people are going back to something that they've been talking about for 10 years and are looking at more ways to utilize kind of an existing technology. Then when you go one level below AI, because AI is kind of the, the level of making decisions and predictions for you, well, how do we now get more of that data? Which is driving IoT and digital twin up, which is why we're seeing a huge increase in digital twin and IoT coming at the same time. Well, how do we capture all that data? You know, what's gonna be actually making it? And so you're seeing a lot of these other technologies be pulled through as a part of it because they, they became more important because their value got higher. I don't know if that answers the question, but it's really impacting all of them. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let Joe answer. What do you think, Joe? I, well, I think it's well said. And I mean, you know, there's when you talk about data, there's different kinds of data. So we've been talking about, you know, ChatGPT, which is kind of an interface to text, text and speech. Um, but you've also got numerical data. You've got sensor data. You've got all these other things of which there have been machine learning models for a long time that are being used. And there's some pretty cool applications of doing, you know, the canonical example being predictive maintenance. But um, the problem is the same in that you're collecting data and that data needs to be stored in some kind of a way. It needs to be stored efficiently. And needs to be cleansed it needs to be you know put in a format where it can be uh you know transformed and uh put into tools that are going to provide you these insights so whether it is a custom gpt chatbot or it's some other tool running in the cloud or or at the edge um it's just it's another interesting transformation if you will to to, to avoid uh, using that word again so i uh, i think in general like the 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 appetite that folks in general are going to have for um, you know, things like AI uh, being more of a forefront is kind of exciting. Um, but yeah, it's it, I, I'm I'm a, uh, approaching all this with a he uh, a healthy level of skepticism. I think to see you know what is the impact going to be, and is that impact going to be sort of consolidated only into the companies that are able to get all of this data? A company like Microsoft, for example, that has you know the graph API and this data across all their different users. Is it going to be also something that smaller companies can adopt and be able to? you know, create a competitive advantage out of as well, or even just individuals to use in our daily lives. Is it, are we giving all this data to big companies that are gonna be able to use it and provide us with insights, but then who really owns that? So I, I really like the the other side conversations that it creates, um, even outside of, you know, what are the possibilities we can do with this data, but just the conversations around privacy, um, maintaining that data um, and the different cultural changes that it's gonna have. Um, it's definitely transformative though. So yeah, well said. Well said, <laughs> and 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 I agree. I think uh, you know, you, you you know it's a big deal when South Park does an episode on it. I guess is my. Uh... <laughs> yep, you hit the pop culture mainstream, right? I, and uh, it is actually on my to do list to see if it actually works to to have my responses to my wife be generated by chat GPT and to see if that improves, <laughs> improves my relationship. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, so on that note, I think, uh, I think I would like to say, Jeff, thank you for being a guest on the podcast. We appreciated your time and love the commentary. We'd love to have you back another time if, uh, if you're willing and able, and, uh, we, uh, we look forward to, uh, to talking with you again soon, hopefully. Awesome. Looking forward to it.